I have tried so many different grinding pads and discs and all sorts of wire wheels to get rid of all this rust on Bugsy. Nothing seems to be working the way I like it. But what I've not tried is a sandblaster. Hello YouTubes. Hello YouTubes. Today we're going to try and remove this surface rust from Bugsy. I have got crushed walnut shells in the media blaster. I think soda, baking soda is the best, but it creates this big cloud of death and the neighbours don't seem to like that. Whereas the, the crushed walnut shells are much cheaper and it's kind of biodegradable. It's just nut shells, you know, it's fine and it doesn't create the big cloud. Right, let me give you a close up and we'll give this a blast. A big blasting gun. It's a bit cumbersome, but should do the job. So I need to turn the pressure on for the, for the tank and work out just how much media I want coming through. Here we go. Well, that was a waste of time. Really disappointed. I thought this little Eastwood blaster would do the job, but as you can see, it's it's really not doing much at all, except for creating a huge amount of crushed walnut shells all over the driveway that I'm now going to have to brush away. Very unimpressed. stuff gets everywhere. I actually think the baking soda is probably the best bet, but it's so expensive. Uh, I need to save up and try some of that. The walnut shells are fine for removing like primer from all those parts on the other project. They're not very good at removing rust. And that was just surface rust. So I'm going to be back to one of my many grinding pad choices. But I'd like to finish that today and get some clear coat on it. Look at the state of my compressor. This is what happens when your wife goes to Dollarama. Honestly, she's like a child. 
Everything's covered in little Canadian stickers and God, hockey boots and jersey and thankfully they're magnetic so they're all coming off. I'm going to keep the big one on though. This is a weird jelly thing. It's very strange. Anyway, naughty wife. So we're back to the angle grinder collection. This is nasty, nasty, nasty. I've got bad memories of this because it took part of my thumb off many years ago. Don't like using that. Got a slightly finer one there and finer one there, but problem with these is when they start losing these little wires, usually end up in your face or your leg, it distorts the wheel and it vibrates like mad. And then, you know, you've got PTSD or repetitive strain injury from using them. So I'm not keen on that. It does work kind of, but it doesn't get right in. Next up is the most brutal method and it's the, the good old sanding discs these are really abrasive you're going to take metal and create sparks with that so that's the last resort easy to use but pff, not good for your metal this is my favorite method this sort of a waffle disc thing this is the this is the actual best you've also got flap discs with it's kind of like scotch bright pads of different thicknesses I've also got this, which is quite soft. Well, not soft. Oh, it's kind of soft. It's almost spongy. This was the first ever gift I got. I think it was from Jeff Hill. He sent me a pack of them. They kind of work, but they're not very abrasive. So we are going to start with the waffle disc. I'm just calling it a waffle disc. It looks like one of those popcorn snacks. I'm sure it doesn't taste like one. Right, let's grind. Well, that works way better than the blasting nonsense. Now, you might be thinking, why is it gone kind of brownish? Well, that's because there was clear coat on this. And then when the flappy grindy thing heats it up, it kind of melts it, mixes with the brown fresh rust and makes it a bit brown. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with some paint thinner, wipe it all down. I wanted to do that before I paint the thing anyway. It's just, just so you know, it's just getting more clear coat on it for now. So let me clean that up, blast some paint on, because I think it's going to rain soon and it needs to go in there. better right it's clouding over really quickly and as you know bare metal in rain insta rust so i'm just going to reverse it halfway into the garage and get the back end painted don't want it all the way in because it's quite fumey i'm just using spray cans again sorry
that'll do is another quick wipe just in case. Right, let's rattle some cans. Get about, I'm going to go for about three coats this time. That will keep me going for another couple of months. That'll do for now. Now, I would love to do the whole car, right? With the compressor and a proper spray gun, but the paint for the spray gun is quite expensive. It could be like $120, and unfortunately, I spent all my money on that power steering upgrade, so that'll need to wait. This will do for now, and also, I like to use Bugsy. I don't want them to be in the garage undrivable for months while I'm taking care of bodywork. So I think the next time we touch it with paint will be an actual paint colour. I'm just going to keep getting rid of the rust, clear coat it for now. I think this will be the last season this summer where Bugsy is going to look like this. A very strong feeling he's going to have paint next year. Ooh, it's a storm coming I think. So I'm just leaving Bugsy out for a bit longer to let the paint dry. Get him back inside, close the door, keep him dry, let this paint do what paint does okay folks uh, I'll see you in the next one I think we're going to do some work on the 7r7 project next take care bye